Hello and welcome. Hello, hello. I see people chiming in. It's wonderful to see you all. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. We will just be giving people time to get situated, get started. We have a wonderful presentation today for you from the East Bay Mud team. So we want to give them time to present, and then we will have time for questions. But don't worry, I'll repeat all this one more time as we get more folks led into, into the room. But thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for lending your time, your voice uh, to this conversation and being here too, ready to learn. I'm excited to learn. How's everybody tonight? Excited for another Zoom? <laughs> 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 I see some folks from last time. So um, that's always good. We wanna you wanna be in community. <laughs> Excuse me, you wanna make sure we're in community. It's nice when we see each other showing up for for these important moments where we can actually use our voice and, and learn at the same time. It's, we are, Carla and I are from the Redwood Heights Association, so we're also really thankful that uh, the community reached out to us to help host this type of an event. Uh, it really speaks to you all understanding part of our purpose as a group, as a neighborhood group, uh, is to be able to hold space for these types of informative and um, convening sessions. So I'm also really excited that we were, that you all reached out to us. I think that's it's pretty amazing. A last second registration. I'm gonna get them to walk. <laughs> Thank you guys for hosting. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Carla, I think you'll have to share the agenda because you are okay. the host officially. Oh, do I? Do you not have? Um, you not have powers? I don't have powers. I will make. I will give you powers. Oh, I think I now. Yay! I have power. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, all right, we had we have thirty seven people from the community registered. So we want to just give folks a chance to roll in. Sure. While we'll do that, I'll just make sure we can all see the agenda. I'm assuming by the looks on people's faces that that came up. People yes. Are leaning in. I see eyes darting left and right. That's a good sign. It's a good <laughs> sign. So this is our agenda. I'll keep it up while we allow a few more minutes for people to come in. There we go. Just in perfect timing. Um, we are going to make space to introduce the humans. It's always nice to get to know the humans. Based on our number of participants, I think we probably will have time to get to know all of our neighbors. Uh, we were worried about running out of time, but uh, Carla, what do you think? With 14 participants, I think we can give a quick introduction. I say name. go for it now. Okay, and you want to start then, it off? And then if we don't have time. So. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate the uh, the excitement. Let's, let's do that. I'll actually all stop right. my share. So All right, so I'm Carla Girardi Lowe, uh, president of Redwood Heights Association, and really happy that you guys are here again. So, <laughs> and they're actually going to give us some additional information that I was unaware of for some Atlas and Detroit. So, uh, and I live on Detroit, so I want to hear it. <laughs> there you go. All right. There you go. Um, of, let's see, uh, how about Diana? Oh, there you go. Okay, I'm Diana Bell, and I actually live on Norton, but the back of my house is Redig. So um, I'm kind of in a part of Norton that just swings down. I've been a member of the association, but this is my first time on uh, one of these calls. And so I was happy. I see Gretchen, I recognize her from when I go do my daily walk. And my other neighbor, Erica, hi. <laughs> Hi, hello to people I haven't met. Perfect. All right. How about Gretchen? Hi, I live at the intersection from which all of the water main breaks happened. 
only two years ago. So we're really looking forward to this being taken care of. And thank you, Evie Mudd, for being here. Looking forward to this. Even though it will be a mess for a while, we know that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, how about, uh, actually, you know what, I should introduce Joe from Evie Mudd, who coordinated this. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Carla. Uh, I'm Joe Volker. I'm a community affairs representative for East Bay Mud, and I am the community affairs representative for the Redwood Heights uh, neighborhood. So uh, my contact information will be provided in uh, the PowerPoint presentation that we have, but it'll also be posted on all project signs uh, throughout the neighborhood. It won't say my name, but it'll have my phone number and email that you can contact me at. That email and phone number, again, will be provided in the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you so much. So now you know association for having us tonight and uh, for pulling this off. Great. Um, how about Erica? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am on Jordan and my house is the one that got flooded by the East Bay mud uh, water main break in 2020. And Gretchen and I joined forces to create the petition to go around the neighborhood to get our water pipes replaced. So thanks for hearing our plea. And um, thank you again for hosting. Um, Jimmy from BMAD. He was here last time. Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, my name is Jimmy Yoloye, uh, and I'm the director of engineering and construction for East Bay Mud. I, I have spoken to this group. Uh, I think this was uh, probably the first meeting, um, and I actually was on on the call for the second meeting. So um, I'm glad to be here again today. Uh, I think we have relatively good news for you. Things are progressing, and uh, David, when he gives his presentation, will. We'll let you know all about it, but uh, I'm glad to be here. All right. Um, how about Kirsty and Jeff? Hello, uh, we're on Jordan Road. Um, Just few, down, few from down from Erica. America. Cool. Hi, Erica. <laughs> we have the whole block. <laughs> all right. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Um, how? Let's see. Who did I see? Josh. Hi, I'm at Jordan and Bennett. Got it. All right. You're right where the work started. Mm. <laughs> um, okay. And let's see. How are we doing on time? Should we just go for it? All right. Then we can finish introductions as we get a little bit into it a little bit further. Um, Kenan, I turn it over to you and I shall. I have a hard time doing that. That's all right. That's why we're we're a president, vice president combination. We're good. We got this. <laughs> Kenneth Scott, he, him, vice president, RHA, and secretary have been taking notes on every meeting for 10 years or so now. So feeling good about where we're at, but I get the chance to moderate and host some of these really cool events. And with that, I get to actually stop talking and hand it over to David um, to talk to us about project updates. Uh, and I think you have a whole presentation. I hope you can have the power to share and I will turn it over to you to introduce yourself, as well as tell us all about what's going on. Like, what yeah. is, what are we hey. talking about? Hey, Ken, I really appreciate your introduction, too, in the very beginning, you know, getting a group of people together, an opportunity to learn uh, and, and ask questions. So thank you for starting the meeting off with that message. I really appreciate it. Um, so uh, hi, everybody. I'm David Katzev. I'm a senior civil engineer uh, at East Bay Mud. Uh, I report uh, to Jimmy, he's my director, um, and uh, I'm going to give you a presentation, you know, just uh, giving you an update on the projects uh, and things, and, and we can have questions and answers at the very end. Um, so I look forward to this. Let's see, I'll share my screen. Um, it, it may be best to hold on to your questions until I'm done with the presentation. Um, uh, it's a very short presentation, and so we can go back to the slides really easily um, if you do have specific questions about um, specific things with the project. So, And thank you for reminding me, if you do have any uh, questions that come up uh, while David is talking, you can put them in the chat and we will be able to catalog them and throw it back to you. Um, if you have that burning question that you know, if I don't write it down, I'm not going to remember. 
feel free to use the chat function. So thumbs up on seeing the screen. We can see it now, yeah. David. Excellent. So maybe something that jumps right out to you in the beginning is that big hundred on the on the left side, East Bay Mud just celebrated a hundred years uh this year. So we're we're in we're still kind of in cellar celebratory mode of, <laughs> of being around for a hundred years. It's our centennial. Uh, so let's move on with the slides. So uh, just a really quick meeting recap. Um, we met with you a couple of times, uh, you know, in the, in the past few years. Um, we, we gave you an overview of our, our whole distribution system. Uh, it's, it's big. It's, you know, 4,000 miles of pipe spread um, throughout our whole service area. So we monitor the main breaks uh, within the whole service area. Um, we do have about a thousand main breaks each year. Uh, and we put together plans and designs to go out and replace pipe um, in a lot of different areas, a lot of different neighborhoods, cities and counties all throughout our service area. So it's a quite challenging um, and uh, work that we do. Um, and we really have to spread out uh, our crews throughout our whole service area. Uh, to ensure we're we're um, you know replacing well we're replacing the right pipe, um, but we're also doing it in a in a in a in a number of different areas. Uh, it's a really big service area. Um, last time we did review with you main breaks in Redwood Heights. Um, I know there's been quite a few main breaks recently, as of course you're well aware. And and sorry for the flooding in in your basement, Erica. I think you talked about. Um, uh, pipeline rebuild is a program at East Bay Mud that's been going for about 10 years now, uh, all focused on increasing the amount of pipe we replace in our system. We know we have a big challenge ahead of us. Um, we've been increasing our replacement rate for the last 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, we were at 10 miles of replacements per year. And just this last year, we did 23 miles of replacements. So we've more than doubled our replacement rate. We've hired a lot more people, a lot more staff, more crews to do the to do the work, um, and we're still going to continue to increase our replacement rate. Um, last time we talked a little bit about design construction workflows. What goes into a design? It takes a while to put together a design. We want to make sure that that we spend enough time looking at what everything is underground uh, to to you know create an efficient project. Create. Um, you know, a safe project and and to do something really uh, uh, high quality uh, and so that we don't have to come back to the neighborhood for a while. Um, and then I think last time we did talk a little bit about uh, geohazards. You know, what's a geohazard? It's a, you know, you live in an area that, that you have the fault zone running right through your neighborhood, the Hayward Fault. So your your land is 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 shifting a little bit here and there. And and we have to plan and design what we put in the ground um, in anticipation of what might happen in your in your neck of the woods um, in terms of any kind of geohazards. Uh, that can also include not just the fault, but it can include you know landslides, uh, you know land shifting a little bit each each and every year. So, and we did talk a little bit about pipe materials last time, but I'm going to revisit that again. So that's kind of just a recap of, of some things we've talked about in the past. Uh, tonight's agenda, I'm going to go through some project updates, some schedules, and some next steps. Uh, so, you know, uh, one thing I want to do right off the bat is just kind of talk a little bit about all the work that we've done in the neighborhood. Um, I hope you can see my arrow. The, you know, the, the, the black lines here are projects that we've completed that are already done. There's a, a, a long stretch of pipe here, the MacArthur Davenport project. Harbor View was a couple of prod, uh, streets here. The Quigley cluster um, over in this area. The Norton cluster, which I think you're probably most familiar with seeing. Um, we had two crews out there for quite a quite a long time, put about two miles of, of brand new pipe in the Norton cluster. Um, Tonight, we've got the, the Reddick-Jordan, 
project that I'll talk a little bit about, and then the Atlas cluster. Um, you, you know, and I, I don't know, you might be wondering how we name these things. Usually, um, uh, to be honest with you, it's really one of my engineers in my group that that <laughs> sees one of the street names that they really like or that's most prominent, and they'll name the project after, after that street name. Um, so we come up with a variety of names for the projects. Uh, so tonight we'll talk about the Reddick Jordan, the Atlas Cluster. Just briefly mention too, we do have a, a, a job up here called the Barner Cluster. This street is Sylvan, I believe, mm. um, and it comes a little bit into Redwood Heights. So here's a snapshot. You know, all the black is what we've already done. It's completed, and the blue is upcoming. So quite a bit of work in this area. I think is, is is kind of a main takeaway from this slide. Uh, pipe. So what are we putting in the ground? This is stuff that we spend a lot of time with uh, in terms of our design work, our planning work. We want to make sure um, that whatever we put in the ground, whatever we replace, um, it's going to last. Uh, so this is ductile iron pipe. Uh, it's made actually just down the road uh, in Union City in a factory. Um, it's going to give us at least a 120 year life lifespan. Um, that's the expected life of the pipe. But more importantly, I think than the than the really 120 years is what happens in all those 120 years with the ground movement, with the geohazards I was talking about, and this pipe. It says restrain joint. You know, what does that mean? That means when you put the pipe together, there's a mechanism inside when you connect it that locks it together so it can't pull apart. And it also can and uh, vertically and it can it can deflect so it can go up a little bit and go down a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, meaning that when the earth moves and shakes and there's there's different forcing, the pipe can move with it and not break. Uh, the earthquake resistant ductile iron pipe is a step above the, the pipe above it. Um, that pipe at every single connection can slide back and forth about three or four inches within each connection point. And so when you're putting pipe in the ground, you put about 20 feet in the ground at a time and every 20 feet with the earthquake pipe, it can slide back and forth. Uh, and that's that's really your um, that's really your best ductile iron solution um, on the market right now. Um, these are really classified in the industry as as the next generation of hazard resilient pipeline materials. And I know that's a lot of words there, but it's 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 really the best of the best, I think, is what um, I want you to walk away with. Uh, so um, those are the materials that we're putting in the ground in your neighborhood. Um, our schedules for the project, the first one, the Norton job, that's that job is done. So planning, design, construction is all complete. Two miles of replacements. Uh, the Reddick Jordan job, the planning design is done. We're actually starting construction on Monday, September 11th. And I don't know if you've already seen a few few of our guys out there on the street. I think they've been out doing a little bit of work, pre-construction work, scoping things out. Um, but we're starting that project on Monday. We'll have a full crew out there Monday, September 11th. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about what this work is going to involve on Reddick and Jordan. So we're looking to be there for about two months, September, October for Reddick, Jordan. We can always have little delays here and there that can push things out. But our plan, our plan right now is to be there September, October. Um, and then that same crew that's doing that project is going to go a little further south and work on the Atlas pipeline uh, replacement project. And that's going to start up in November, um, go through through January 2024. So um, our schedule right now is, is you know, by February, um, we should be done. Um, you know, weather can always impact 
uh, <laughs> us. If you get a, you know, last year there were a couple of weeks of rain that just kept raining and raining and raining and our pipeline crews slowed down quite a bit. So things were delayed. Um, so things like that can always um, get in the way of your schedule, but that's what we have planned right now. Okay, so let's dive a little bit more into the detail. Um, here's here's Jordan Road and here's Reddig. I'm, I'm telling you guys where you live, so I'm sure you know. Um, the, the little drops right there, the main breaks, the red ones are main breaks in the last five years. The orange is, is before that. Uh, so this, the blue kind of marks the area that we're gonna be working. Um, uh, we're gonna remove 1600 feet of, of pipe on the Jordan Road. Um, it's 1930, 40s, cast iron. Uh, of course, it's been, it's been breaking a lot. Um, and then we're going to install earthquake resistant duct iron pipe on, on Reddig Ave. Um, the Jordan Road project differs a little bit from the Reddig project in that we actually have two pipes in the street in Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a pipe on one side of the street, pipe on the other side of the street. The, the bad pipe on the, on the east side of the street we're going to remove that from service, but you're all connected to that bad pipe on the east side of the street. The pipe on the west side of the street has not broken. It's in very good condition. And essentially what we're going to do on Jordan Road is transfer your customer lateral service from the bad pipe um, to the very good pipe. Uh, this is actually it's a it's it's a it, it won't take as long. The good news, I think, for everybody, the work on Jordan Road, um, typical pipe pipe replacement can take longer than just transferring services. Um, so the Jordan Road um, work will get done um, pretty efficiently, and we're transferring it to a steel pipe um, that's in extremely good condition. So we're confident. Um, that we're we're going to leave you with a with a very good strong solution at the end, um, and then Reddick we're putting in. We don't have that luxury on Reddick to transfer to another really good pipe, um, so we're going to put in a, a brand new earthquake resistant ductile iron pipe. Our crews are going to start um, at the north end of Jordan with the service transfers. They're going to move down um, in the southerly direction. Um, and so they're going to take care of Jordan first, and then they're going to um, jump over to Reddick. Um, and, and just just a little bit more, you know, our crews kind of we can do multiple things on any given day. Uh, so it's it's not like they're always going to be working in one area. You'll see them throughout um, this this area uh, throughout the next couple of months. Um, and I and I encourage you to go. Uh, our crews, they know all about this work. If you have questions, you go talk to them uh, and they'll be happy to talk to you. So that's the Reddick Jordan project. Um, the next project we'll go to is the Atlas project. So this, this is the extent of that project. You have a section on Detroit Avenue and then a whole section on Atlas plus a little bit on Young Avenue. This is all gonna be brand new earthquake resistant ductile iron pipe. So, I mean, you're right in the fault zone um, in this area. So we're putting the best pipe we can um, onto these two streets. Uh, brand new pipe in this whole area, uh, about 2,500 feet all total. And this, so this is the second project. Uh, and, and like I said earlier, we expect to have this done in, in you know, by February. Of, of next year. Again, the the main breaks you see there, the red were the last five years, the orange um, before that. So quite a quite a few main breaks in this area. So I, I think we're gonna improve the, the service in this area quite a bit. Uh, what to expect during construction? I think, you know, there's, there's, there's the installation portion of the work. Um, then we have to, uh, you know, we have to test it. We have to water, we have to do our water quality testing. We have to disinfect the pipe 
we have to do some flushing of the water to make it uh, to make it ready for service. Um, and then there's final paving. So this kind of what this this diagram here walks through the process. There's you know things in the beginning we have to do to set up a really safe working environment. Um, placing signs, uh, just or, you know, getting the materials delivered, storing them in a the right spot, uh, just getting the whole crew set up to begin the work. Um, then there's you know the installation of the pipeline. That's that's you know that's that's the main that's the main piece of work right there. Um, once we're done with the pipeline work, we do a temporary pavement. So you're you're going to see a trench. And then you're going to see a little bit of asphalt on top, and that's temporary pavement. Um, that is not final pavement restoration. Um, after we get the pipe in the ground, we pressure test it. Well, what does that mean? We fill it up with water, and we we increase the qu pressure quite a bit above the working pressure that it's normally at, just to make sure it's it's we install it correctly and there's no leaks. Uh, we disinfect the main, um, do our water quality testing. And once that's all done and the pipe is in service, then we reconnect you to this, this new pipe. We'll take you off the old pipe and we'll put you on the new pipe. Um, so really you see us twice when we're putting pipe in the ground. You see us come by your house putting pipe in the ground. Then after we're done pressure testing and water quality testing, then you see us again come and transfer services um, to the to the to the new pipe. Uh, you know, last but not least, we close things out. We we have you know we always have a punch list things that we have to do to to make sure we complete the project. You know, one hundred percent. We're always cleaning up. Um, we do this on a daily basis. We try to leave the job site clean and organized at the end of each and every day. We have sweepers out there that that try to sweep things up and, and keep things clean. Um, and then last but not least, there's the, the final paving restoration. Now, the good news, I think, for both of these jobs, the Redding Jordan job and the Atlas job, is that um, our project engineers have done a really good job coordinating with the city of Oakland, and we've, shed, we've set up uh, uh, paving agreements, cost share agreements, and you, the street is going to get paved. Um, curb to curb for both of these projects. It's a little unusual that that both of these pr projects are going to get full pavement restoration. Usually we end up just paving um, our trench plus a little bit beyond that. So maybe one lane width. Um, but we did some coordination work with City of Oakland. They had flagged some of these streets for, for paving anyway. Um, and so we entered cost share agreements um, so the paving is going to happen and it's going to be curb to curb. So you're going to get a brand new um, pavement for the whole extent of, of both of these projects. So hopefully that's good news for you all. <laughs> uh, and then that's it. So I'm happy to, I can stop sharing my screen and answer any questions uh, that you have. Thank you. Thank you. That was everything and more. Very informative. As someone with a civil engineering background, I was very excited to see the pipe cross sections. And, and that might not just be me, but there may be others who were excited to see pipe cross sections and learn about durable pipe. But uh, I definitely appreciate the breakdown um, and the understanding of the paving situation, because that is something to be celebrated uh curb to curb paving on any paving on jordan let's just be real um <laughs> let's take that yeah. out on the 30, yeah, 35th really. if we can <laughs> yeah. uh there was a question in the chat from diana bell uh diana you can choose to read that if you like. well i'll just i'll i'll speak and let me say that i have um i i walk these hills every day. And so I was there watching how you did um, on the other side of, of Reddick and Norton all around. And it's been fabulous. I spoke to the guys today who started on Jordan and they are um, friendly and agreeable and all of that. So I'm, I'm excited about it. And, I, and especially hearing about the um, 
the earthquaking of, I mean, the, the piping and all of that. And so um, my question and my issue is I want it too. Okay. <laughs> my property is the gap. You know, you all stopped on one side of my house on Reddick and now you're stopping on the other side and in the middle sits me where I have a neighbor that already had a mudslide and the, the road is, is cracked down and I can see um, some shifting in the land behind my house. And so I'm thinking, wow, we're kind of fixing this great fix on either side and there's going to be this part in the middle that is like, you know, the weakest link in the chain. And so I'm trying to figure out um, how that gets. If you if you look at your, if you go back to your first slide with the cluster and the pictures, yeah, yeah, all along the creek. You don't do the whole you don't do the whole Reddick along that creek. There's a gap. There's a gap. Yeah, Diana, do you want me to share my screen again? We can look at that. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah it would help for other people to if if I don't want to take all the time, but yes, there is that gap. Yes, you can. I'll I want to show you something. I think this and this will answer your question. Do you see what I, my screen again? I see the screen. Uh huh. So you're talking about this section right here, right there. Mm -hmm. We do not have a pipe right there. No water pipe goes there. No. Oh, right. Just a sewer. So we do not have. Okay. That's kind of a walkway in between this neighborhood and that this neighborhood, right? Oh, it's, it's a whole road. It's a whole road. Um, it, yeah. was, it was open before the mudslide a few years ago. And they when they finally op got that fixed, so it got closed off and then they fixed it. And then um, so Reddick is it's 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 Reddick. It's just it was closed and everybody kind of likes it. I'm not trying to open it, but I want to make sure that it's secure. Yeah. And we, yeah, we, we replaced the pipe all the way up to this, this, this end here. If you can see where my arrow is. I know exactly. I can, I can, I know it better than you. Yeah, you do. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the end of, of our pipe system right there. It does not extend over to the other, other side there. So can that, I throw in a little history? Can I, can I just want to hold on just a minute. I just want to ask then, because the other part of me on the upper side of Norton, um, I don't see anything coming there either. And so um, I'm wondering where I get my water from if it's not below and it's not above. Well, what is your, you want, can you four, tell two, me? Your, three, one, four, two, three, one. Four, two, three, one. I have another screen here that. And you're on Reddick. Norton, 4231 Norton. The back of my house is Reddick. Oh, you're on Norton. Okay. Oh, yeah. There you are right there. So you, you're getting your water from, from, from Norton. From the Norton cluster? From the Norton side, yeah. But I'm saying, so... Have those pipes been done? You're saying I got new pipes already and just don't know it? You Because there's a section of Norton up there that they stopped as well. There is a section up that there that we stopped. Harrier yeah. and Georgia. Yeah. yeah, you're right. There's a section up there that 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 we did not replace pipe. Um, and you know, we I mean, we have to make these decisions all these all the time when we come up with a cluster, when we come up with a replacement project we're always prioritizing the pipes that have broken and that are in the worst shape. And uh, there don't appear to be any main breaks on that upper section of Norton there. And that's why we don't add extra replacement work in that, in, in that area. Okay, all right. So until it breaks, it won't get ripped. Well, and then I'll tell you that, I mean, just in terms of our process there, uh, usually it takes, I mean, it, it takes a number of different breaks, um, until we kind of, it elevates into the, to the high, high risk category when we start, um, planning out projects. So we take our whole system, our whole 4,000 miles, we have a, 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 something called a likelihood of failure score. And we actually grade our pipes from A, B, C, and D. 
So um, mine are what? The ones that service me up there are what? Those I see on my other map as an A pipe. Is that great? That's good. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you got you're on an A pipe right now. Okay. So um you're you're in good shape right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's That's see. Great news. Yes, Gretchen. Um, I have two questions. The first one is about the west side pipe on Jordan. I mean, there is a fault running down Jordan Road. And so what I'm concerned with is when you open up Jordan, I guess, are you re removing the east side pipe or just letting it go? We, 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 when we do our work, we abandon our, the pipes in place. So it'll be left there. Okay. So then the west side one, you will be opening up and looking at and making sure that all the joints are in good shape. So, so the fact that there is a fault running along there is something that you will be, uh, you will be observing that pipe to make sure that it it, it really is we will. as good as you're hoping it to be. We will. We will. Okay. Um, and the the when we open it up, Gretchen, it's um, when we do the service transfers. It's a smaller, you know, it's not as big an opening as, you know, when we're putting in, in brand new pipe. So, you know, maybe maybe five by five, six by six uh, in terms of a, a, an opening where we access the pipe. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, the, um, the other question I've got is um, the pavement on Jordan. Do you know anything about whether or not the city is going to take the paving from the end of your project all the way to 35th? Uh, I do not know that, Gretchen. Is that, something, can, is that have, something you guys could find out and let us oh, know about? Actually, I could find it out really easy. Um, we Well, I can't find it out right now. I have to access the, the, the city of Oakland paving map. Yeah. But we could follow up with you to to yeah. get you the actual. That would be dynamite because otherwise we're going to need to go to trying to see if our council member can help on that because it's just miserable. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the. I'm not really sure the drainage is really set up all that great on Jordan with that the city of Oakland has, but that's that's not what we do. The drainage. The, the storm, the, where the storm drains are and, and everything is all set up. At least I've walked the project um, a couple of times and that was one observation I had. But yeah, that's that's something you're going to have to bring up with the city of Oakland. Yeah. So thanks for bringing that up. The, all of the storm drains actually go through my backyard, through the creek that they've created and don't maintain and don't ask the property owners to maintain them. So nobody is um, looking over, Response. watching over. And in January, they flooded. Again, we got floods on both sides. So that was fun. Um, I have contacted almost every department I can or know to contact, and they keep redirecting me. Is there anyone you can put me in touch with who could pay attention to that drainage uh, in our neighborhood? You know, Erica, we could put you in touch with um, a woman named Sarah Fine, who really helps us out with the paving. And okay. from there, maybe she could she could connect you with someone in, at the city of Oakland for the drainage. I think that'd be my best. That's where I would start. That would be great. Um, how could I follow up with you about that? I can, you know, I can pass this information on to Joe yeah. um, Volker, and then Joe can can pass it on to you so and then over to erica and also gretchen the question was if the paving was going to go to 35th is what you're asking yeah. right yeah okay because lots of neighborhood neighbors down that way are really interested in getting that done asap and we've told them about the need for this work and this will probably need to happen before that all gets paved so if they can hear <laughs> you know, if you can help us make those connections to find out about that, that would be great. 
Yeah, there, I think... there's also a public park there. So it's used by many more people than just the neighborhood. So the right. condition of the street is wearing every single day. So I think Gretchen Thank and you, you Erica, guys. I say you both, both of you start with Sarah Fine in terms of the paving, and then she can connect you with, with someone um, that, that does more with the storm drains there. Would you like us to drop our email in the chat so you can contact us, Joe? Yeah, that would be great if you could. Thank you very much. Okay, great. May well, I follow I this did, up with another question? Can I just interject real quick? I did I uh, just send a link in the chat and it is to the map, which I'm sure you've seen. And it does have Jordan going, you know, being on the paving plan that goes all the way to Redwood Road. Yeah, I also threw the link to it's the, just about timing. Uh, index, the paving index and it's at the lowest end, like in terms of rateability. So my guess is that puts it at a, a higher um, priority. And that map does go all the way from 35th through the project we're talking about here to Reddick. So it is possible that that dovetailing, that chaining uh, funding that David was talking about, that extended uh, paving curb to curb could be part of, I don't know if it is, but could be part of the overall paving plan that replaces Jordan all the way to 35th and is desperately needed. And actually, I'm glad you guys are speaking up because if things fall apart on, on the city doing what they should on that, that part of Jordan, maybe we can enlist you guys to help us put a little pressure on the city. Well, yeah, we talk with them all the time about our, we try to coordinate as much as we can with all of our pipeline projects and paving that's one of our that's one of our main goals all throughout Oakland so oh, I was actually meaning the Redwood Heights people too yes so oh I the really, Redwood Heights okay the, what Sorry. what I'm really happy about is that we have more than just a citizen voices and connections I really appreciate you all it's great thank you you're welcome May I add something to that to this conversation and Erica I'm glad you you, you um, struck a chord with me because in this section, lots of other people kind of um, work their way through this part of the neighborhood. Like people, you know, walk their dogs, ride their bikes behind, you know, Long Reddick all the time. And the same thing, I when I leave my house, I come down and I come through Jordan. All I don't live on Jordan, but I can't get to my house without coming up that way. And so, you know, the health of Jordan affects many of us on Norton. Right. Um, so it's important. There are a lot of little cul-de-sacs on Norton, but when we come out of there, we have to go down to Jordan to get to the main road. And so I can, you know, it's crumbly. It's very, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it would be my highest priority just for my own um, mm -hmm. egress, you know? So, um, and you're right. I mean, the park is always full, right? There are lots of people bringing, families and kids to the park and all of that. So lots of activity in that area. Yeah, so thank you for doing the cost share agreement with the city. Today. Yeah, so that's awesome that you guys are doing that. I just wanted to follow up with um, the question that um, of course I have, which is, do you have any plans in place in case there is a break while working on the road? Because we are pretty concerned about we're pretty concerned that when you're drilling to open up the road, it can um, shake the pipe that's in place that's had so many breaks. And if you're not planning on turning off the water while doing that, then it is possible to have another water main break while the work is being done. And in my um, in the past meeting, and also just from talking to the people who work on the street who are very nice, but they don't even have sandbags with them. They have nothing in place in case of an emergency like that and then our homes are at risk again mm -hmm. and we don't and have your wallet so and just, we don't and we don't have curbs don't that's have curbs. that's a yeah. really important aspect of this so erica number one you bring up a really good point and i've seen it in a number of spots um some of our pipes are in such bad condition that actually when you relieve the soil pressure on the pipe itself it 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 can break. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you bring you bring up a good point. Uh, the good news is is that our guys they know this and they're ready for it, and they know where the valves are 
to shut the main off if there is a break. So, you know, best case scenario, well, I mean, worst case is that you actually get a break, right? Um, but the good news is, is that they know exactly where to go to shut the main off and they can shut the main off pretty quickly to reduce the amount of water that then um, uh, drains away. So I, I hope that's true because during the last, during the flood that flooded my house with two feet of water, not just my basement, my home, it took them over an hour to be able to turn off the water because they did not, one, they did not know where the valves were and then they couldn't physically get them off. Right. So, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll mention it again to the crew. Okay. Uh, the, I know the crew supervisor, I was just talking to him today. I can, I can talk with him another, you know, another time to just be ready for it. Um, okay. to, to know, uh, you know, we, we don't typically, um, store sandbags in our, uh, vehicles for these things, but, you know, I could ask him, uh, just in case, you know, especially since the drainage is is not so good right there. I can see if you could do that. So uh, a couple of things I can I can mention to him. Thank you about this. OK, but I think you, you do. I mean, thank you, because um, with the six that happened in this neighborhood, um, we, <laughs> each time we said, is there any possibility you guys have sandbags available because we don't have curbs and yeah and the city wasn't providing sandbags at that point so so for you to be prepared with that that would be dynamite thank you okay <laughs> it would thank be you. i mean it's obviously we're we're speaking from a trauma place but also yeah. um for your wallet for the wallet of east bay mud you know that would also be a smart yeah, it's not a it's not a lot of extra money time for us to spend just to be ready for something like that. So right, right. I I understand what you're saying. And then I just want to share also since you're not replacing the pipe on Jordan, um, our house shakes just when a trash truck drives over the road. Mm. So I just want to point out that the, um, thinking about movement is not even just for earthquakes. I mean, I don't know, I, probably because we have such a high water table, I'm not exactly sure why this happens, but um, so I'm concerned if you're not replacing that pipe with an earthquake, a uh, proper earthquake pipe or whatever it was called, it, are, are you aware of how much movement happens on Jordan? Well, the one the one good thing is that the well, the, the, you have steel pipe. The, the other pipe in the street is a steel, a thick steel welded pipe. And we often put welded steel pipe in earthquake areas where we have a risk of, of a fault zone. So steel pipe is a solution we have, the earthquake resistant ductile iron pipe. We typically use the steel pipe with the much bigger transmission pipes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, two, three, four feet in diameter. That's our go-to material for, um, for that size. So it's a very, very good pipe, I guess is the message I wanna leave with you on that front. Uh, so yeah, I don't know about the house, the shaking as okay. as the as the guard, I think the garbage, yeah, I think that happens at my house too, so I. <laughs> and I don't wanna take up too much time, but maybe this question will help somebody else. Um, um, what about the possible toxins that are in a new pipe or the new junctures? And you said you were going to disinfect and flush it out. Um, what do you use for disinfectant? Um, what what do we need to look out for in case we do feel like the water has been contaminated or? Uh, we well, we chlorinate. We use you know we have we we chlorinate the pipes to to disinfect it. Um, we disin uh, we we dechlorinate it um we we treat you know we we never dump uh the the chlorinated water down a down a storm drain or any, anything um so we always take you know we do best management practices to to dechlorinate the water uh to make sure it's safe um when, when we're actually doing the flushing so uh and and then the the materials itself that we use um they're all certified. The, the the American Water Works Association 
um, has a number of different standards um, that certain pipe materials have to meet, uh, water quality standards. Um, so we only install materials uh, that have been certified um, through a number of different uh, processes and standards. Uh, so we the, these pipe materials don't have any uh, uh, materials that can contaminate the water is, is, is the main message. It's also a question in the chat from Kirsty and Jeff, uh, who are saying that they're in the midst of building in their backyard and they want to know how this will be impacted. Is that Kirsty and Jeff, you're, you're talking about the project, the construction itself, how it'll be impacted? Like, yeah, logistical overlap. So we we're building an ADU in our backyard and been slow going, but things finally picking up. Like we're hoping to get the foundation poured, like a concrete truck, maybe like early next week. You mentioned that you're starting early next week, but probably um, farther up the road, but they have like currently right now, there's a pile of dirt on our front um, kind of front parking space, potentially impacting the the lateral to the house. And I imagine there might be like stacks of wood there at some point, things like that. So I'm wondering if if there's an overlap or, you know, with with um, our guys needing truck access to the street and you guys having things blocked off, is there? Yeah, I think to Jeff- To a foreman on site? Yeah. Or something? Jeff, the, 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 the foreman on site, his name is Brian. Brian Wolverton, uh, you, you'll need to talk to him uh, to coordinate. Um, and and you can, if you go out and just ask for the general pipe supervisor, that's the that's the crew foreman. Um, his name is Brian. Just just talk with him to coordinate that. We'll work with you. And you can always contact me, Jeff and Kirsty. You can always contact me as well. Uh, I'm Joe, and my contact information has been put in the chat, but we could put it again in there um so if you can't get in contact with brian yeah and yeah. for it for anybody that needs access to their driveway or space um has a construction project we'll work with you and coordinate that um uh and, and hopefully time things so it doesn't impact your your project yeah well the other issue is we don't know exactly when they're doing stuff we try to try to keep up on when they're going to be here. But, you know, like we were hoping they were going to do cement tomorrow, but we don't think that's happening. And we, you know, we don't really know what, what the the days are that trucks might be coming and going, but, um, yeah, but we'll try to do our best to coordinate. Yeah. That's my best. That's my best recommendation there. Okay. That sort of brings up the traffic issue. Will you be, we had a PG and E event here maybe a few months ago, and they put out, um, uh, what are they called? Sandwich board um, markers saying, please do not park here uh, on this side of the road. Will you be doing that sort of thing and letting us kind of know in advance when- There will when be, there will be signs. Here, huh? Yeah, there'll be signs, barricades put out well beforehand in terms of where no parking zones are. Um, and then we take, Gretchen, we take care of all traffic control. So anytime we're doing any kind of work, um, we either do the traffic control ourselves or we hire um, a, a, a traffic control outfit to do, to, to bring traffic in and around the project site. So we handle both those things. Great. <laughs> I noticed when PG&E was out here, they all, they have police cars that are kind of, they're protecting, um, I don't know, the workers, the equipment or something. And um, just because of the, I guess the crime that's going on now, but um, I'm wondering, do you all do that as part of your- uh, Diana, that's a good one. We don't, we don't have that right now, but we, you have to watch out for that. Um, we do, uh, I've, I've, we've had a number of crews you know they're out on the job site working. We have a lot of expensive equipment in our in our trucks and everything. Um, and people have come by and stolen stuff from us. Um, mm -hmm. It happens more yeah, more no. more than you think. So 
I, um, I know when I see that, I mean, literally, if PG and E is here, there's there's a police officer kind of car situated or or patrolling around. I guess yeah. if you could get that, that would be um could be yeah. helpful. Well, we don't have it. I just we we just everybody just kind of watches out for it and we try to park our vehicles and keep our materials all in one spot. And yeah, we just don't have that. Okay. David, one question. What does it look like for the people when you are hooking them up like that timeline? Do they lose service for a period of time? Yeah, they'll lose. Um, first of all, we'll let you know well beforehand if, if you're going to lose water service. Um, and when we transfer services, it can be, you know, maybe one to two hours when you're out of water. Um, when we transfer the, the the customer connection from the old pipe to the to the new pipe, um, sometimes we have to do shutdowns of of the main. Um, if uh, sometimes the construction work just requires that, if there is any shutdown of the main for an extended period of time, you'll get at least forty eight hour notice. Um, our guys will come around and they'll put door hangers on on your door or they'll or they'll knock and they'll tell you what's going on um our crew is pretty communicative um they're they they, they talk a lot of, and, and they'll let, they'll let you know when this is going to happen i have one more question about timing so you said it was going to start at the north end of jordan the jordan portion of the project is going to start at the north end yes so the closest to reddick or Past Reddick. Past Reddick. How, how long does it take them generally to complete that line if it's just transferring to a pipe that already exists? Uh, you know, Erica, probably, you know, I, I mean, I we have it scheduled there for two months. So mm -hmm. why don't we plan for a month on Jordan and a month on Reddick? I'll just break it into two. I know the, the, we, we might get done with the Jordan work faster than that. Um, but, but I think, you know, once you just plan for three or four weeks for the work on Jordan and then three or four weeks for Reading. Okay. So by the time they get to our house, which you don't know where my, our, my house is closer to Norton. So by the time it gets there, I'm looking more like a few weeks from now. A few like. weeks. Yeah. I'd say two or three weeks from now. Okay. okay Could great. be faster. Um, hard to know. They'll get a better sense for how long it takes to do these service transfers for this crew. Okay. So, and they'll they turn off the water when they do the transfer. Yeah, you'll for, lose water for an hour or two. Just the particular house that it's doing the transfer for. Yes. Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do all these transfers with live mains under pressure, so uh -huh. we don't we don't shut down the main, we don't shut down the water to do a a, a transfer. And do they cut the pavement right before they do the transfer or do they cut all at once and then come back and do transfers? They'll cut it just before um, doing the transfer. Okay, so I don't have to worry for two or three weeks that yeah. the water main might break in front of my house. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I I mean, I can't guarantee anything, Erica. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but I think it'll be a couple of weeks if you live at the southern end of Jordan, where we're doing the work, yeah, probably be a couple of weeks before we're there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Excuse me. So, how it's going to work in a more detailed level is they'll show up and say it's going, and they'll start digging the road for in front of say two or three houses and then do connections and stuff and then cover that up temporarily and then dig further and like that? Or are they gonna dig up and do it and dig up and do it, you know? You know, they might do one day, they might do three or four okay. service reconnects, one day, three or four, one day, three or four, as they because, kind of move down the street. Yeah, because we, you know, like, so we can't drive down the road while it's being dug up because it's both sides of the road. You you live in the area, you will have access. You can drive through. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And you will, if, if, if we're blocking your driveway for work, and My you need driveway to... is blocked anyway because we're doing the construction. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, but, but please we, finish that sentence. I would like to know. But we always provide access in and out of your house. You know, if we're doing work right in front of your house and you need to get into your house, we will move. Okay. And let you come in and then let you go out. Okay. Uh, Thank you. That's that's what we do. And but if there's a hole, will you put a steel plate over so we yeah, can we plate things and so you can drive right over. Yeah. 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 If there's a if there's something opened up, we have plates that we move around and and okay. so we'll we'll always try to accommodate you. And a completely almost different subject. What about the sewer lines? Ah, uh, well, I, I can't answer that. So that's the city of Oakland. Uh -huh. okay. And so if you want to find out more information about the sewer there, you're going to have to talk to them. Because I certainly don't want to postpone repaving the roads. I mean, we all drive these sort of shimmy patterns up and down the road to avoid the biggest potholes. But I just, you know, I, I don't want another catastrophe to happen. <laughs> I understand. The sewer understand. line should not be impacted. Well, not by his intent. That's where I was going to bring in some history a while ago. Yeah. Um, the sewer line on Reddick, and I think Jordan, as I remember it, were worked on before the landslide. And the landslide was in 98. So we have a relatively... Certainly on Reddick, again, I don't know where all the sewage is coming from, but it's possible that Jordan feeds into that. Um, anyway, that's relatively new sewer system. Hmm. I'll say it wasn't worked on since I've been here, and that was 91, not behind my house on Reddick. Well, uh, well. <laughs> we moved in in '87, so someplace between the two, <laughs> it it was a mess. Yeah, so I, I'm with you, Christy. But I want I follow up with somebody else on the sewer because I can see the I can see the 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 road caving. I I can I can see it. So something's happening beneath. And it's you not mean beneath the sewer laterals? Yes. Yeah, ours is caving. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, well, what do you do when you pave that section if the sewer lateral is sunken in? How do you handle that? How do how do we handle that? Yeah, because if you're paving the road from curb to curb, uh, non-curb to non-curb. <laughs> right, right. Um, what, what do you do if the sewer lateral is sunken in to the asphalt, which, which ours and many of them on our street are? Well... I mean, we're going to, I mean, the city of Oakland's going to do the paving. Oh. So, I, I mean, I hate, I would keep passing it off to the city of Oakland, but I, I think you got to talk to them. And, and I mean, the sewer lateral, I mean, if it needs to be replaced, that's, that's your, right? Isn't that you own the sewer lateral? Yeah. But for some reason on our street, they're all sinking down. I'm not sure why, but they're m multiple of them are sinking and we just hmm. had ours done because we just bought our house five years ago so um i don't know why but it's not just ours it's many of them and so it's creating mm -hmm. these dips and like almost almost like the shape of a pothole but that's where the sewer lateral is mm. can, can you wow. maybe encourage the people who you're in contact with um with the city of oakland to host a meeting like this with us because oh, yeah. you guys are doing a great job modeling how to interact with communities and mm -hmm. they could really learn from you yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys, thank you so much. You're so professional yeah, in comparison you. to working with other groups. Well, we can mention that to I mentioned Sarah Fine, and so I we can mention that to her. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. This has been incredible. I love watching the interaction between community and our service providers, those who are here to um, make sure that we get the services that we need. Um, and so this was a wonderful example, like was stated just now, 
of how to engage with community. So I thank you, Joe. I thank you, David. Um, and I see from the faces of those who are here with us the same um, extension of gratitude. If there are no more questions, I have definitely learned a ton. <laughs> I'm feeling very knowledgeable. Um, and I think we can say thank you to our, our hosts. Um, thank you to all of you who have shown up to represent. I hope you spread the word to your neighbors of what you've learned here today. Uh, I myself pick up a gentleman who lives right at the start of this project on my carpool. So I'll make sure his family knows that this is coming their way and what to expect, but do share the contact information for Joe um, and do share what you've learned here today with your neighbors. Uh, it's been, it's been wonderful. Thank you. And additionally, we did record this, so um, we'll put it on our YouTube channel. So I'll post that in um, the neighborhood listserv, or maybe I just send an email um, to the folks that are in attendance. Um, actually, I need to share it with more because there are people that aren't here, but it'll be on our YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> thank you, Redwood Heights. You're so yeah, welcome. I wanted to also say thank you to Carla and Kenan uh, for hosting us tonight. And David, of course, my colleague uh, for that informative presentation. Uh, I also wanted to just give a special shout out to uh, Tony Deng uh, for connecting me with Carla originally at the beginning of this. Uh, Tony, thank you so much. Um, and everybody for coming in and, and hearing this about this project. And so my contact information is in the chat. Uh, and so please feel free throughout the project to contact me. If you have any questions at all, uh, coordination issues uh, with contractors or, uh, and I will be reaching out uh, with uh, Sarah Fine's contact information uh, to Erica and Jeff uh, and getting Gretchen some information about uh, the paving, even though I think that there was a link in there, but I'll send that out. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you so much, Carla and Kenneth. You're very Thank welcome. you. And thank you for your questions. Thank you for your patience. Thank you guys. Can't have wait to see you. <laughs> you we'll be there. September 11th. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a great evening. Thank right. you. Thank Bye. you, guys. For other RHA events, please visit rhaoakland.org slash events.